Hellbenders are our largest native species of salamander we have in Kentucky. They'll get to be probably two foot long, sometimes a little bit bigger than two foot long. They live entirely in streams, but not only in streams, they have to be in really high quality streams that have really large slab rocks, so big pieces of boulder that are pretty flat, and that's where they live their entire life. In the fall, time of year we're in right now, they'll actually start breeding, and the males will guard large egg masses that are underneath these rocks. Today is part of a project we've been doing for about two or three years now in collaboration with Purdue University. Some of the researchers from Purdue will come down and assist us in locating adult hellbenders. Everybody puts on wetsuits and snorkels and masks, and then it's just a matter of getting in the stream and snorkeling along, looking at the bottom of the stream for these really large slab rocks that a hellbender would like to live under. Once you find this big rock, or one of these big rocks, you essentially hold your breath, swim under the water and use a flashlight and kind of stick your face up underneath the rock to look around and literally look and see if there's a hellbender staring you back in the face. Most of the time when you do that, you don't see a hellbender. Mostly there's darters, maybe some fish living underneath the rocks. I've seen a couple of fish that are wedged under the rocks. Yeah. Yeah, got me excited. Occasionally we'll find a turtle, big snapping turtle, something like that that's living underneath there. That's a big one. You got one? No, there's a big snapping turtle over here. Oh. We got one. Swimming along, we found the first one. Everybody went over and checked it, and before we started trying to pull legs out, we wanted to get a pretty good survey of the site. So within five minutes, we found a second one. Hey, we got another one over here. So we found two hellbenders so far. We're gonna keep moving upstream, see how many guarding males we can find. And then after we do that, we'll come back to the known sites or the known rocks and start using a probe to hopefully pull some eggs out. And I think within maybe an hour and a half or so, we had four hellbenders that we had located in maybe a 100 meter section of stream. Then it's just a matter of using probes to see if we can get the males that are guarding the nest, get them to move out of the way enough to where we can run this probe in there and start pulling eggs out. He won't move. He's not especially aggressive, but he is just blocking the hole. We might come back to him later if we don't get something else. They're guarding them for a reason. They're wanting to protect these eggs. So it's a little bit of a fight to get that probe past the male. Luckily, we've got three more down here. We're gonna try those. We can't get any from those. We'll try to come back and uh, hit this guy again. Hopefully get some eggs out. We were able to go to the second hellbender at that point. The rock there wasn't as large. So we were able to really get back in them within five minutes or so of probing, started pulling eggs out. Typically what happens is you'll get in there and maybe pull out one or two eggs to start with, but then as you continue to get further back into that rock, further back in past the adult male, you can start pulling out pretty large masses of these eggs out from underneath the rock. Yeah, we're starting to get some eggs coming out now. We'll put them in a cooler and folks from Purdue will take them back to their lab where they will raise these up into adult hellbenders. And the whole reason we do that is in the wild, if a clutch of eggs has maybe 500 in it, you're lucky to get maybe five to 10 adult hellbenders to actually survive out of that clutch of 500, maybe one to 2%. But if we take these eggs back to the lab, they can get a 60 to 70% survival shift there, which gives us a lot more hellbenders that we can then bring back to our Kentucky streams and hopefully repopulate some of the streams that used to have good populations that don't anymore. Having pretty good success so far pulling the eggs out. Haven't had good luck yet on getting the actual adult male out of the nest, so hopefully we can find another one. Put your goggles back on and watch this corner of the rock. I think the hellbender might come out this side. Okay. He had actually a second chamber that he could use to exit the rock from. So at that point, we had agitated him to the point to where he was ready to abandon ship and leave whatever eggs he had there and try to find a place to get away from us. So I was able to grab him and put him into a net so that we could take him back, process him, see how big he was, how much he weighed, if he had any sort of health problems, and really check him over to see what sort of health he was in. In studying the life cycle a little bit from what we've seen so far, most of what we're encountering in the wild with our hellbender population are really old hellbenders. So this is a species that can live for multiple decades. 51 centimeters. Total length. 
funding for this project has been a mix, not only of federal funding that Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife gets, but it's also funding through the Kentucky Wild Program. Kentucky Wild is a program where citizens, not just in Kentucky, but around the U.S. or the world, can contribute to the department, and 100% of that funding is used for research projects like this. We're done with the adult at this point. We've done all the measurements that we've needed, checked him over, make sure he's in good health. Now we'll take him back and put him back underneath the rock that we got him out from a few minutes ago.